a small screwdriver to hold the piston down or even a small allen key or hex key it will fit in there as well so once that's re reset in there push the pin all the way clear through and you can reuse the tensioner when it's time to snug the belt down you'll just pull that pin out okay next we're gonna put these idlers in place uh, I'm gonna start with this little blue one that I just cut the bolt on because it was a little too long and um, we don't want it going into the block so um, take your idler with the bolt in it already I put a little bit of blue thread locker on there not too much just one little area it'll spread out so it'll look like that and uh, put it in place and this one's a 12 millimeter and we're gonna thread that in and tighten it down to about 13 pounds of torque. And while he's putting that one in, I'll get this one ready. Um, this is our upper coil black idler. And same deal with this one. This one's a 14 millimeter. Do the same thing here. Put a little bit of blue thread locker on it. And this one goes in the upper spot here, just below the power steering pump. And that one tightens down to about 29 point, 28.9, I'm sorry, 28.9 foot-pounds of torque. We're going to leave the orange one that goes below it off for now. Um, that'll be the last idler that we put on. The next idler we'll put on will be the splined one. This one goes right next to the water pump. A little bit of thread locker on that. That one bolts down there. The torque specs on these 14 millimeter bolts are the same. So, tighten it down to 28.9 foot pounds of torque. Now, next thing we'll do is the tensioner. We'll put the tensioner in place, put a little bit of thread locker on the end there. That one's a little trickier, but the hole forward is just to the left of that small blue. Eiler that you just put on. And again, that one also gets tightened down to 28.9 foot pounds of torque. Okay, next thing we're going to do is line up the passenger side cam gears. This one's very easy. Um, just do it with your hand. Um, you take the single line. Remember earlier when we lined everything back up, we're basically resetting everything the way it was. So this one here is the single mark, lined up with the single mark. So the double mark is down here right now, facing directly down. Now what we'll do is take the second cam. These ones, it doesn't matter which way you turn, just whatever's closest to get to the point that you need. Now this one, you'll see the double mark here. You need to line that straight up and down with the other double mark at the bottom of this cam gear. So those two match up, and the single mark here matches up with the single mark on the inner timing cover. Now this one's easier to see but if you have a problem seeing it um, you can take a mechanics mirror and you can put it on the side there. Take a real good look at the mirror and see exactly where those lines are in relation to each other. Alright, for this next part I'm going to use both of the breaker bars that we have. Um, this one here has the 10 mil on it. This one does as well with the half inch adapter because this is a half inch breaker bar this is a 3 8 so um, I'll use the longer one here and you want to set it counterclockwise this bottom gear can only be twisted to the left I mean sure you can twist it to the right but that's your motor so I don't recommend it anyway so what we're gonna do put this ratchet in counterclockwise and there's our double mark our double marks have to meet up right here in the center straight up and down so what we're going to do is set this counterclockwise, put pressure on it, set it right in the center. 
Just leave it like that. The weight of this breaker bar will hold it in place. So we don't have to have somebody hold that or put clamps on anything. It'll stay right there where it is. Uh, to line up your belt, um, you're going to have a crank mark. Usually it's by the brand name's label. Um, doesn't mean the brand name's going to face you. In this instance, it's going to be the other way around. So the brand label is actually going to face toward the cab. So that's our crank mark. we we'll determine these are our two passenger side cam gear marks. We're going to start on the lower one because I did not loosen the guide on the bottom. So I need to tuck it in first. So what we'll do is we'll route the belt around our breaker bar to keep it there. We're going to start with the lower white line. Here's the upper one. Just going to kind of lay it over the top one a little bit. And we're going to line up. We can move this gear around a little bit. We're going to line up our bottom white mark on the belt, which is right here. There. Our bottom white mark with the white single line here. We can turn it a little bit so you can see it better. Um, so, put it on the teeth of the gear to where it lines up perfect. And then route it underneath the gear and tuck it underneath the lower guide. Once you've got that there, you can double check it with a mechanics mirror to make sure that the marks <clears throat> are lined up with the belt and with the cam gear. Okay, looks like we got that one just right. Hold that in place and you can lift up this guide and just slide the belt underneath there. into place and that lines up here on the cam gear now we just give it a slight turn and now everything is lined up you've got your double marks in the center facing each other you've got your single mark your belt mark and the notch in the rear timing cover mark all lined up so now this side is done we're going to move on to the other side okay now we're going to route the belt uh, between the idlers and around the driver's side and we'll start out with the bottom part of the belt that we just fed around the bottom cam gear and we'll bring it over and what we're going to do is wrap it around this idler and around the water pump so it's like this Okay, pull out some of that slack now just hold that there and the top part of the belt we're going to move around the crank and we're going to line it up to the mark on the top. So now that's there. We're going to go around the bottom of the tensioner and the bottom of the small blue idler. Okay, this is for those of you with ABCS, um, I think 06 and up, WRX, um, STI, 04, 05, 06. Um, you guys have these kind of cam gears on the top. Uh, you don't have just the bolt hanging out. You'll have to take out these little 8 millimeter screws. And uh, once you do, remove this plate. You're going to lose a little bit of oil. Just a few drops, just take a rag, this normally will drip some oil and uh, this is the same kind of bolt we've been messing with so just make sure that you clean that seal off and put the plate back on there and put the screws back in when you're all done setting your timing. Okay now we're going to route the belt around the driver's side. This is the trickier side, like I said the bottom one can only be turned left, it should still be aligned because the weight of this uh, breaker bar is holding it in place. Uh, we'll adjust the top one here in just a moment. Um, now that we've got the rest of the belt routed, we're going to pull some of the slack and tension out of it. I'll apply tension to it and wrap it around the bottom cam gear. There's a white mark I've placed on the side of the belt to make it a little easier to line it up. Um, so that way you can see when it's in the right spot.
Once you slide it in place, you can see that little white mark I've added there. If not, again, take your mechanics mirror and you can put it right down the side and see the line and make sure they line up there. Now that we have our bottom cam gear aligned with the belt, uh, we've got our double mark facing upward, single mark facing to the side with the single mark on the belt, all in order. Now we're going to take this mark on the belt, match it to the inner timing cover notch, and we're going to rotate this cam gear, the top cam gear, to the right, so clockwise. It can only be turned clockwise. The bottom one's counterclockwise, the top one is clockwise only. So we're going to lock our breaker bar in place so it cannot move back or forth on its own. You don't want this spinning out of control. So we're going to turn it to where the marks line up, which they do. We're going to pull the belt up and we're going to slide it in place. It's going to be a little tight, but it will go on there. There we go. So now we pull this out. We can take a look. We've got our double marks matched up. Got our single marks matched up and our single ma marks matched up over here. Okay, now that we've got all of our marks lined up on our belt and cam gears, um, we're ready to put the last idler on. Put some thread lock on the threads. It's 14 millimeter. We're gonna pull up on this belt and we're gonna thread it in this hole here. And then once it's threaded in, we're gonna torque it down to 28.9 foot-pounds. Okay. Okay. Okay, um, it's a little trick that I've learned in order to get the required one millimeter gap between your timing belt guide and your actual timing belt. In order to get that one millimeter gap, it's a little hard to do with a feeler gauge. Um, just because of the angle of the curve. So what I usually do is take a piece of cardboard, something that equals to one millimeter. Um, you can take your feeler gauge and walk around and find some cardboard and, and uh, find some that's about the same width. So I'm just going to use what the bearing came in, rip the ears off of it, and double them up and that is the same as one millimeter and now this is able to bend and curve where we need it so we can place it between the belt and the guide press down firmly and bolt it down and pull the cardboard back out so that's just one trick that I've learned um, there's probably other ways of doing it but this one works for me okay now we're gonna set our timing guides uh, we want one millimeter about one millimeter um, earlier I showed you a little trick with some cardboard to get about a millimeter of spacing that could be curved. Um, just seat that down on top of the cardboard and then we are going to tighten these to about 7.2 foot-pounds of torque. Once you've got those snugged down and tightened right, you can pull your cardboard out and you've got the correct spacing. Um, we're going to do the same thing here with the guide on the crank. These are 10 millimeter bolts. Thread one there. Put your cardboard spacer in there. 